your message. So without further ado, let us welcome our first speaker, Tatun Tati Shin Yap, the group CEO of YYC Holdings. Hello, Tati Shin. Hi, hello. Hi, hi. Okay, so you you will be sharing on budgeting for COVID nineteen pandemic crisis. So yeah. um, yeah, let's let's share uh set up your screen first. Okay. Uh, I cannot share. Maybe you have to allow me. Oh yeah, all right. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Okay, got it. All right. Okay, I can see your screen. Maybe you can make it to full screen. Yeah. First. Hang on, huh? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, if you're ready, just take it away. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Shin, CEO of YYC. Uh, first of all, uh, we are living in very interesting times. Uh, before I start, I want to have a feel about how everyone is uh, handling the situation and how everyone is going. So can I ask, uh, and you could uh, please let me know in the chat box below, or you could raise your virtual hands. Yeah, I would like to know uh, for all the business owners or accountants or managers here for your company, what is your sales level like now? Okay, I want to know whose sales have already recovered to pre-MCO times. Please either raise your hands and let me know or in the chat box, let me know 100%. Okay, yeah, I, I, please uh, let's make it today a more two-way interaction. Let me know what is everyone's status today. And also I'd like to know, okay, if you say that your sales have recovered, but it's not with, uh, more than 100%. I would like to know whose sales have already recovered between 50 to 100%. Also, please either raise your hands and let me know or let me know in the chat box. Okay, I want to know whose sales already recovered before MCO times compared that time until now is recovered, but it's between 50 to 100%. Okay, and also let me know if any one of your sales is still below 50%. I want to know what is the situation everyone is experiencing now. So let's try to make this interactive, even though I can't see you all physically because of CMCO, but uh, I can, we can actually discuss this virtually. Okay. Now, uh, I want to first thank Exabytes for, you know, inviting me for this uh, event. And I think it's fantastic because now is the time that we all need to learn new things. Okay. I see there, there is below 50%. There is, um, Okay, let me see. Ah, uh, be, below drop sixty percent. So yeah, you can see that sales is still very bad for many businesses. Okay, now, now is new norm. Okay, I'm sure everyone have already been through shock. I'm sure, right? Even CMC now, I see everyone is more experienced already. So everyone has been through shock. We are, we have passed survival. Actually, we are in the process of recovery. Okay, actually, in fact, two, three weeks ago, everyone was already, you know, back to normal or even more. But now, unfortunately, there is CMCO. And we see for recovery, many companies are at different levels. Uh, thank you for those um, who have replied to me, Jackie, Karen, Mr. Chan, and a few of you. Thank you, because uh, I'd like to know what's your status so that we can really discuss in more detail, yeah? So, but yeah, I can see many companies are still at 50%, okay? So now we know in order to recover in, in these COVID times, um, COVID has disrupted everything. Don't you agree? And uh, COVID has made us necessary to go online. So that's why Exabytes is having this wonderful event. But it's changed things, turns, turns things upside down. And we can see under new normal, we probably need to coexist with COVID for a longer period of time. Yeah. And in order to survive or recover or thrive in this new normal, we need a new game plan. Do you agree? Now, in order to have a new game plan, what is a new game plan? If you ask me, new game plan is new strategy. As business owners, we all need strategies. Okay. Today also, I want to know how many of you are business owners and what industry you're in. Please let me know in the chat box. Okay. Or maybe you are accountant 
or then you are the expert in budgeting, yeah? Or maybe you are a manager of a company. Please let me know uh, what is uh, your line of business. Okay, I see homestay, very good. And video marketing, okay? And also what is uh, animation, many different industries, uh, okay? And so what is your, um, your position as well, okay? So, wow, interesting. I see many different services, legal firm, okay? Now, in order to have new strategies, uh, first thing I want to share with everyone, I, I believe for business owners, it's not hard to come up with strategies. Do you agree? I believe many business owners have many, many business strategies. In fact, more owners, business owners have many ideas, but the problem is what? Okay, doesn't matter you're in retail, electronic security, digital consultancy, legal firm. I think business owners have a lot of strategies, but a lot of times the problem is in what? Implementation, execution. You have to admit, let's admit it, right? Even before COVID, even before COVID, many businesses were already having a lot of problems. And many business owners already have a lot of, um, you know, barriers to implementing strategies, okay? So statistics shows uh, the barriers to implementing strategies, there's four. One is vision, vision barrier. Most of the time, the strategies are all in business owners' head. Correct or not? So the business owners know what they want, but it's not being shared. Or even if it's being shared, most of the time, the owner will tell me, my clients will tell me, Shin, my staff, they don't get me. Sometimes my partner don't even get me, okay? Because statistics shows that only 5% of the workforce understand the vision of the company. And some businesses, they don't even have vision, okay? So these are the problems. Then second, people barrier. A lot of times, the, the, there is no incentive linked to bonus, uh, to, to strategy. So that's the second problem. The third problem is strategy is not being discussed. A lot of times it's just at high level, okay? And fourth is resource barrier. And the fourth one is what I want to talk about today, which is about budgeting. Because we can see that 60% of organizations don't link budget to strategy. So if I, I, I can say that most SMEs, they don't do budget, okay? And even if they do budget, is not linked to strategy. So that's where the biggest problem is. So now I want to ask you a question. From now until the end of the year, how much time do we have left? Three months? Yes? And with all the CMCO going on, how many days we can actually open and operate as usual, business as usual? Nobody knows the answer, okay? But maybe, maybe a lot of people say 2020 is right off already. Correct? So a lot of people say 2020 right off already. Now, then the next question is, how well will you do in 2021? Because 2021 is a crucial year. For some businesses, I've seen a lot of the business owners, some of their accounts, uh, they didn't know. Some business owners, they didn't know. 2020, they are making huge losses. I don't know about your business. Please check with your accountant. Are you in profit position or loss position? But I've seen many, many cases in 2020, many businesses, huge losses. Now, what's wrong if you're making a loss? Okay, I'm sure you all know, correct? If you're making a loss, it means your cash flow is impacted. And for non-accountants out there, unfortunately, I want to share with you, your loss will follow you until the day you make a profit. Okay, so if 2020 is a write-off year, is a loss year, I want to know, ask your what about 2021? And in order for 2021 to be successful, the first step is we need a strategy and that strategy needs to be translated to numbers because business owners, managers, whatever business you are in, it is a number game. Why do we say that? How well your business is doing depends on how much money you are making. So unless you are doing charity, and I believe all of us here, whether we are in music business, I see cloud software, music business, financial services, animation, whatever business you are in, I know you're doing it for passion, but none of us are in business for charity. And even if 
it's charity. Uh, any charity organization also needs money. Do you agree? If you agree in the chat box, say yes. Okay. Now, if you think, if you agree, and if you know that, you know, we are all, we are well, doing business. Yes, it's for passion, but we still need money. Okay. Everyone say yes already. Thank you. Uh. So therefore, first step we have to learn is we need to make a proper budget. Okay. And uh, so business owners, I know you are not accountants. It's okay. Let us guide you today. There's another fellow accountant who will guide you also afterwards. There's two sessions by lady accountants. So um, I'm looking forward to that. So, but uh, for business owners, accounting is the language of business. And so if you want to do well in business, you want to succeed in business, you need to learn your numbers. Okay. And we are going to make it simple for you to understand. Now, first, like I said, strategy. Strategy is where you want to go. So 2021, where do you want to go? Do you want to be like 2019, where you were as, you know, to the profit level or sales level of 2019, okay? You want to do better than 2019. Exactly where do you want to go? You need to be very, very certain about that. And you have to be very specific. Okay, 2021, do you want your sales to be um, 15 million, 20 million. I mean, that only business owners can decide, but where do you want to go? Okay. Then next is where you are right now. Okay. Realistically. Okay. I know many business owners have visions. Fantastic. We all need that. And we need to work backwards from our vision, but we also need to know where we are right now. And that is a reality check. Okay. And budget is a step-by-step -step process of how we're going to get there. And budget is the numbers, you know, actions translated into numbers. All right. So, okay, fantastic. Janky wants to do better than 2019. Fantastic. I think that's the way we should um, operate, you know, because yes, COVID or non-COVID, there are so many businesses who still do well in uh, crisis. There are also businesses who go bust during good times. All right. So let's uh, have these three important things. First is strategy is where the business want to go. That's number one. Then how to get there. Okay. In order to get to where you want to go, business owners, you need your whole team. So I'm sure many of you, you are not a sole proprietor. You are probably, you have a team of your staff. Okay. Now for your team of staff, you need to guide them. You need to share your vision, your strategy with them how and to, to share with them so that you will get there together. Because as one person, it's difficult to achieve your vision. But if you are as a team, meaning a business owner, a leader, leading your team to where you want to be, your people is going to get you there. Okay, that's number two, people. Then number three is your operating plan, the exact action for your people to get there. So that is a clear path because a lot of times, Business owners have fantastic strategy. Okay, they tell their team about it. But what is lacking is step by step how to get there. For example, you want to cross a river. Okay, your strategy is to cross a river. So now what next? Do you build a bridge? Do you build a tunnel? Or do you just paddle a sampan? What is it? That is the operation plan that you need to get there. And budgeting will determine whether you build a bridge or a tunnel or sampan because it will uh, specify what is the resources that you have, okay? So today, I want to show you for big companies, wow, their budgeting process is very, very robust, okay? So this is what a big company, what, what they do, okay? Uh, quarter four, they will start to share out, you know, the templates. Normally, they go off-site. And then they will have an annual business plan. Okay, then they will have presentation by CEO, what are their targets, and then they have budget template, and then the finance department will consolidate. Okay, so they will have a very, very robust process. But today, I want to share with you how non-big companies, okay, I'm sure many of you are big companies, but how non-listed companies okay, also can get their budgeting done. Okay, so let's see. Now, to, so today I want to share with you how to build a budget in three days using a software. And this software is YYC Power Cash software. It's a very powerful software because we have actually purchased it from overseas. 
it talks all about cash, all right? And especially at times like this, COVID times, cash is so, so important. So when we are doing budgeting, we want to make sure we have a lot of cash, okay? So who wants to have a lot of cash in the chat box? Please uh, type cash, all right? If you want to have a lot of cash, let me know, all right? Now, first step, first day, Okay, yes, cash. All right, fantastic. First day. First day, we do, what do we do? We use power cash to do a high level budget. And this high, uh, what, what I find, uh, why a lot of people get thrown off by doing budgets is a lot of times we go too detailed. Because as accountants, I'm also an accountant, we are trained this way. Every single cent must reconcile. So that's how we were trained. But for business owners, I think first of all, we need the high level budget, meaning the big direction, the big, big direction where we want to go. All right. And then from the high level budget, only we drill down. Okay. This is my uh, philosophy. Now, uh, I now know cash, how to make cash budget. Okay. Let me share with you all. Eh? There is cash, trust me, it's sitting somewhere in your accounts, in your books. Just you didn't see it. Okay. Now, um, Assumptions. When we are doing budget, what assumptions are we going to make? What will happen next year? Uh, your sales, you know, next year is still going to be a COVID year, you know. So your sales level, what is it going to be? Okay. Uh, will there be further government stimulus? Will there? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm a bit worried. Uh, today, you think uh, there may be a change of government. Anyway, we don't discuss politics here, but you don't know, right? Okay. And then, what if your key customers run into trouble? And what if income stream dives, okay, dries up? Okay, what impact would innovative new idea has on your business? So I think for now, depending on what business you're in, for example, I have a um, travel agent company, client, they are client, they really have to pivot. Uh, what they do is they bring people overseas. And you know, you can't do that anymore for a while. Okay, even all the airlines are suffering, even Singapore Airlines is suffering. So what do they do? They have to pivot. What do they do? They are bringing in goods to sell here. I mean, that's, that's um, one of the things they are pivoting into. There are other things that they are looking at. But the thing is, we can't just wait. We can't just wait and see. We need to take an action. So therefore, budgeting will actually help you to look into that as well, okay? To see, you know, what, what is possible for next year. So I want to discuss a case study here. Now, this case study, I chose a very traditional trading hardware company, all right? And for this company, uh, their sales is 10 million, profit uh, for 2019, 800 over thousand. They have no budgetary controls, their problem is they have overstocked. So a lot of business owners, they will ask me, Shin, you know, I, my company is making profit, but, you know, I can't see any cash. Okay, so where is their cash? I will show you. I will show you where is their cash. Uh, they have debtors, they have bad debts, okay, and then they don't have budgeting, they don't really look at their accounts, and uh, there's no real SOP. So by the time the accounts come up for a business owner to review, it's too late. Right? So many business owners, they only review their accounts once a year, including this client, this, this company. And so uh, they look for us actually during the first MCO time. And so they have been our client ever since. Uh, okay, they asked us to help them with their uh, financials because during the first MCO time, they were very, very worried that their cash cannot last. Okay, because nobody expected government to close for so long. Okay, so now let's look at this case. Using uh, Power Cash, I, let's talk about 2018, 2019, 2020. 2018, 2019 is uh, actual numbers. 2020 is an estimate. Lah. We estimated full year. Okay. And Power Cash will forecast 2021 based on the pattern for the last three years. All right. So um, in 2019, they were doing 10 million sales. 2020, wow, big drop. 7.5 million. Now, Power Cash estimated that in 2021, they will do 8 million, 5% increase. Okay, there's no right or wrong. 
is an estimate. Okay, so we need to go in deeper with action plans to see whether they can do it or not. Okay, and if you look down here, they also estimated that operating profit will improve. Why? Why? Why will operating profit improve? Okay, I will also show you why. Good. Let me first find my annotate button so I can point to show you all. Okay, so profit can improve. Hey, we look here, like 2019, 800 over 1,000. 2020 is a right off year, but still not lost yet. They are estimating about 200,000 profit. Now, 2021, uh, based on the Power Cash software, they did estimate of 500,000. So let's go into details. Uh. Now, uh, how about the next year uh, balance sheet? When you're doing budget, you need to look at profit and loss as well as balance sheet. Okay. Now, I was sharing with you, this company got money, but where is it? Can you all see where the money is? Show me the money. Where is the money? Okay, anyone? Help me type in the chat box. Where is their money stuck? Accountants, come on. I know many experts here. Where is their... Thank you. Inventory. Their money is in inventory. Can you see? Uh, 2020. 2020, 2019, 6 million. Their cost of goods sold is about 6 million. And their stock is also 6 million. That's huge, isn't it? Uh, so many experts here. Jackie also expert. Uh, Jing Ying as well. So this company end up have to do what? Have to borrow. Can you see? Borrowings, short term, long term. 4 million short term, 4 million long term, 8 million. So... I want to ask you a question. Is this company efficient in their working capital? Who says efficient? Who says not efficient? Okay, if you ask me, of course, I think you all have the answer also. I, I think very a lot of experts here, like I said, definitely or not efficient, right? Now, first, let me... No, no not efficient. Huh? Let me share with you first how Power Cash Calculate is a high-level figure. First, uh, these are the estimates, okay? 5% is the 5% uh, increase in revenue. Well, this software has, based on the past pattern, come up with this. You can adjust up or down, depending. All right? So let's say we stick with 8 million. We say, okay, we stick with the software assumption. Let's, let's just stick with it. Uh, for cost of goods sold, they also use the previous year gross profit margin. So they also use the uh, previous year gross profit margin is 20%. So same here, means their cost of goods sold is 80%. Okay, for business owners, if it's the first time you hear, it's okay. Bear with me. Slowly, you get the gist of it. Gross profit, cost of goods sold. The more you hear, the more you will be familiar with it, right? And what happened was the, pro the software says, the software says, the uh, AI says, you need a cut in your overheads in order to make the operating profit. Operating profit, 800 over 1,000, then there are other expenses. Now, is it possible to do so? Who will know the answer? Will the software know? They won't know, right? So who will know the answer? Business owners and your team. You need to figure out, okay, if the software based on previous pattern tabulated this, you know, possible, uh, 8 million, you can still, you cut your uh, operating costs, your overheads, you can still make the profit, uh, but in when we, we, we look at the past trends, actually it's, it's happened before, right? I want to show you in this company, in the past, I want to show you here, can you all see? Overheads was 2.7 million when they were doing nine mil, almost 10 million, and then they were at 1.7, and then 1.19, they went down a lot. And, and this year, in fact, we helped them cut a lot of costs, okay? Now, is it possible they stay lean for next year? Well, the management need to sit down and discuss, right? And then to see what are the possibilities that can be done. But on a high level, this is what uh, the, the Power Cash have worked out, okay? So let's look into further. Now, we can see margin drop a lot. Margin from 34%, drop to 30%, drop to 20%. Especially in 2020, why ah? It's hard to do business ah, right? Because uh, what this trading company share with us is everyone throw prices, and so they uh, they forecast. That's why in order to survive, in order to still do sales, they really need to reduce their margins, and that's the 
that's what they have been uh, doing. Okay, and we look further. The problem that like I said just now is their, their money is stuck in inventory. Okay, and many of you have pointed out to me already, their cash flow not efficient. Why? Uh? Why? Uh? First, we look at receivable days. So there's two ways of looking into whether you're efficient or not. Uh, a lot of people say, a lot that you, for business owners, I know accountants, you're expert in this, but for, I'm sure a lot of times you want, uh, when you go to the bank, you want to borrow money, you always say for working capital, correct? Now, what exactly is working capital? Let's explore today, okay? Working capital is your receivables plus your inventory minus your payables. Now, if we look at this company, Receivable days, how many, it means how many days your debtors take to pay you on average. So if we look here, in 2019, the debtors took 60 days to pay them. That's good or bad? That's okay, lah, all right? That's, for Malaysian companies, is quite typical, all right? But can be better, right? And for the 2020, it became worse. It became 90 days, right? Yeah, 90 days is long. I agree with you, Jackie. And we look at inventory days. It's very, very long. It's 397 days, meaning from the time they buy their stocks until they sell, they took 397 days. That is very long, okay? And that is where their major issue is. And, but, 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 their payables help them out. Oh, their payables very nice to them. Actually, you should be nice to your creditors, you know, because they are in effect giving them interest-free loan. Don't you think so? Okay, so that's why be nice to your creditors. Yeah, they are giving 200 over days. That means you can take goods from them and you need to pay them back only 200 days later and they don't charge you any interest. Okay, so that's, that, that, that's what, what's happening here. And so this company, they are... Work, their cash conversion cycle or their working capital days, you take your debtors plus your inventory minus your payables is 266 days. So from the time you buy the goods until the time you sell, until the time you collect money, you need, this company needs 266 days. Means they take 266 days to turn one cycle. And that's where all the money is. Okay. And this is especially for companies who hold a lot of stocks or who give that. So it's, if you are a traditional business, lah, okay, a lot of cases of a traditional business, a lot of your accounts may look like this. Okay. But I see here, uh, many of you may be not traditional. Okay. I see sort of online business and all. So I believe your working capital days is better than this company. But this is an, uh, yeah. So what happened was in the balance sheet forecast, the software used the same exact amount of days. If in the past, the pattern is 90 days, for 2021, they still use 90 days. If the pattern in the past is 200 over days for your payables, they use 200 over days. So they follow back the pattern. And, but we know if we follow back the pattern, your, the company's cash position does not improve. Do you agree? Now, business owners as well as managers, in order to improve, we must really know what situation we are in. And so when we pointed out this situation to this trading company, they were shocked. They were having problems even before COVID. Do you agree? If you agree, say yes and let me know. They were really having problems before COVID. Today, I just had lunch with banker. Banker is telling me they, they are facing so much issue when the moratorium is just lifted because some, now they can't even look for the, 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 they can't even contact those people who have taken a loan. You know, from April until July, 4,000 companies have closed down. So these are what is happening. So I see a lot of yes, thank you. Uh, and so how to improve? We know the situation already. Next is we need to problem solve. We need to find a solution. Now, before we find a solution, I also shared with this client. I said, actually, did you know? He didn't know. Huh? I said, did you know for every $100 of revenue, 
you were making $20. And this $20, you use how much working capital to, to, to make, you know? In order to uh, make this $20 gross margin, how much working capital did you invest? He said, I didn't know. We calculate for him. The cash, power cash actually just have all these figures inside. He used $63. He used $63 to, to invest it, $63 to get $20 gross margin. Again, I want to ask you, is this efficient? But he's been doing business like this all this while. And he didn't realize because he never come for classes like you all. Okay, so fantastic. I, I, I think I want to give you all a lot of credit because you took the time. CMCO, RMCO, or MCO, you took the time to come and learn because this is basic and you need to know this, especially if you're a business owner. So not efficient at all, correct? I totally agree with you. And I worked out some more the cash, power cash shows. In 2019, okay, the, his, he was doing better before, okay? In 2020, is 267 days to turn, like I said, right? The year before, he took 189 days to turn. And because he took longer to turn, he, his, his balance sheet was lazy. It took, the cash impact is 1.4 billion negative. Can you see that? Some people say, oh, just a few days got a lot of difference. No, yes, no, but you can see the increase in working capital days, cash impact, huh? is 1.4 million. That's the diagnosis we give him. It's very serious. And so he said, how Ashin, how should we do it? What should we do? And at first, this business owner said, you know, my industry, everyone's like that. You know, hardware, you know, supply to construction company, everyone's like that. Is that so? Okay, so we questioned him. And so in order to solve this problem, we asked him to look at seven levers of his company. Every company have seven levers you can look at to improve your profit as well as your cash flow. And so in order to help him survive 2020 as well as to plan for 2021, we asked him to look at these seven levers. Now, what are they? Number one, price. I want to ask you, is it possible you increase price 1%? Yes or no? Not a lot. I'm not asking for 10%. I'm asking for 1%. Is there any strategy you can do? Can you show your value? I'm, I, I want to ask you all because a lot of people say, uh, nowadays uh, to do business, we have to slash prices. But is it true? A lot, there's a lot of price wars out there. But I want to ask you as a consumer, will you go for the cheapest product? Or would you go for the most value for money product? Which one? Please let me know. Will you really just go for the cheapest? I think a lot of times it really got cheaper. Cheaper lah. Or will you go for cheapest or value for money? Okay, lah, thank you. Lah. Most value product. Okay, ask yourself. So, okay. So therefore, but, but, but in order to increase price 1%, you need to show your value. And I believe what happens for many business owners is we are not good at showing our value. I think maybe Malaysians very humble, I don't know. Uh, but I find that we, we need some improvements in showing the value. Okay, so I, I'm sure you wouldn't go for the cheapest. Okay, depends on what, what product sometimes. Okay, I, I see got a lot of answers, very de debatable, very debatable. But most of the time, if you ask uh, most people out there, you will go for the most value. So how do you show value? Okay, so then therefore I want to ask, is it possible to increase price 1%? So we asked him this question. He said, yeah, la, can la, 1%, I can look into, see how to, um, you know, improve it 1%, okay? So if you improve price by 1%, definitely it will impact your cash flow as well as impact your profit, correct? And then we also asked him whether you can improve volume by 1%. Of course, right? This one for sure. But if you just improve volume 1% without improving price, the cash flow impact is negative. Uh, why is that so? Because there is, you need to hold stocks. So there's the stocks element and there's also debtors element inside. 
So therefore, the impact on price is more than the impact on volume. A lot of times, a lot of people think that I reduce price, my volume go up will cover. Actually, it's not so. When we run the stimulation, it really shows that price impact is a lot more than in terms of uh, volume. Okay, then I, we asked him, is it possible to reduce cost of goods sold by 1%? Possible? Okay, so he said, mm, yeah, la, I can look at, especially times like this, my supplier maybe can give me a good deal or something like that, right? Now, also, is it possible to reduce your overheads by 1%? Okay, in the stimulation, budget stimulation just now, we wanted to look at reducing it by more than 1%. We need to look at what are the areas. And then is it possible to reduce your accounts receivable days by one day? Can you collect faster by one day? He said, yeah, can. I can do that. I can get my team to really, really discipline and call. And can you reduce your inventory by one day? Again, I'm sure you, you have the answer. And also, can you increase accounts payable by one day? Okay, so if you work on all seven levers today, everything by 1%, I'm not asking for more. The impact on profit is 167,000. Nowadays, that is a lot of money, do you agree? And the cash flow impact is 184,000. Now, when we did his next year budget, we applied this. But we said, of course, you can do better. What do you think? Do you think this company can do better? Do you think that this company can do better in terms of cash flow, in terms of profit? Who thinks, yes, they can do better? Let me know also in the chat box. Huh? Now, to do how to do better, okay? First, okay, I think there is a mistake in the slide here. Sorry, uh, I haven't replaced it yet, but I want to show you. First, he can reduce his cost of goods sold by 5%. So actually, this is not minus, it's plus. Uh, it's plus 469,000. So if he reduce his cost of goods sold by 5%, the cash flow impact is plus 469,000. The profit impact is plus 316,000. Sorry, there's a typo here. Sorry, yeah. Uh. Okay, so that's one. He's, then the second thing that he could work at more is inventory. Remember, his inventory, rather than improving it one day, because his inventory is so horrible, right? 300 over days. We said you could look at reducing your inventory by 180 days. Actually, he has already started to do it. Even before budgeting for next year, he already started to do it. He has already improved inventory by 90 days within three months. Okay, But if you see, you look at the budget here. By improving inventory by, 300, three, uh, by 180 days, the cash flow impact is $3 million. Okay, There's no impact on profit. All right? But the cash flow impact is $3 million, which is a lot of money, especially during COVID times. And this three million, if he does not improve, where will he get the money from? From banks, right? So therefore, this company, he really focused, even before next year budget, he already very focused on improving stocks. And he improved stocks within three months. How did he do it? Focus, okay? How did he do it? First, most business owners don't look at their stock risk because too much already. So he looked at what is the high turnover goods. And he also looked at what is the low turnover goods. And he came up with a few very innovative offer as well as bundling. And in that three months, he managed to clear a big, big chunk, 90 days of his stocks. And at the same time, he also ordered less. Okay, so Many business owners, they think, I want to sell more, I need to have more stocks. But we know that's not the case. So by doing so, he can improve his cash position as well as his profit position. All right. Okay, so let's go further. Now, so this company, there are a few areas that he could look at. Okay, so first is stock clearance. Stock, uh, and second is, well, I didn't talk about debtors yet. Actually, debtors, if you ask me, stock debtors is all about what, Tim? Uh, what, what do you think it's about? It's all about management. If management pays attention, focus on it, management have discipline to collect on time, 
to make sure you're, you don't uh, over order and things like that, definitely you can clear all this. And when you, I, I, I said just now, actually why the company make profit but no money is actually all sitting in your balance sheet. Okay, and for this case, uh, in order for him to clear all that stocks, debtors, we ask him to set up a dashboard. And this dashboard is very, very useful. What, why do I say that? It has a red light, green light, and yellow light system. So red light means I did not achieve. Yellow light means in between. And green light means I've achieved. And we track this weekly. And once he set this up weekly, how much stocks he wants to clear, the whole management team is very clear exactly uh, what every month, what or every week, how much they are looking at to clear. Okay, so that's the first thing. Day one, we use Power Cash to set up a high level budget. Once that's out, day two, I highly recommend this for everyone, is to synchronize all your departments whether you are a big company with 200, 300 people, or you are a SME with 10 people, get your whole team together and synchronize so that everyone knows what is the clear goals of the company. The left hand must know what the right hand is talking about. So one of the things that the trading company did very successfully is he brought his purchasing department, his sales department, actually purchasing department, one person, sales department, one person, at least he sat them down and discuss what, how they want to do this together. So it's a common goal. If he did not do that, a lot of times you find in companies is, you know, purchasing will not agree with sales. Uh, purchasing will say, oh, why are you not selling this product? Or sales will have always fight with operation. Okay, so we need to know, have this synchronization activity so that the whole company knows what's happening. So if let's say you are doing a, uh, tech company or service company. Similarly, your sales team needs to know what your service or your operations people is doing. And we need to be very clear what is next year's target. And you need to set, sit down and be able to challenge the assumptions. You know, so I, I find that a lot of times uh, during budget sessions, if there's any, the boss is the one talking. And what happens to the rest? And, and, and for business owners, I find that boss is high level. So sometimes boss is at the level that, that nobody dares to give feedback. And so let's, when, when, when we have this happening in a company, I, there may be blind spots. Because as a business owner, there may be blind spots that we don't know about sometimes. So therefore, we sh must really take use of day two to synchronize everyone, to put everything on the table. Let there be debates. Let there be a uh, feedback session so that everyone can clear the air, okay? And the third day is after it's debated, then we regroup to each individual departments to make amendments to the budget. And this is the time where you work out the details, okay? This is the time where you work out the details and that is the three simple process because of the time limit, okay? So that's all I can share for today. But um, before I finish, there's a few more things. Uh, I hope you all have a little bit of time for me because I know there's Q&A. Um, I want to share with everyone, we are going through um, very um, interesting times, challenging times. But actually, uh, we all know, even before COVID, doing business is not easy. Half of most businesses are gone within one year. Within five years, 80% are gone. Within 10 years, 96% of businesses are gone. And even 100-year business like Lehman Brothers, they are gone. And a lot of times, um, like I said, businesses have blind spots. Ignorance is not bliss. Huh? And so therefore, budgeting like, uh, and financial management is a big, big part of um, doing business. As business owners nowadays, we, not, we need to not only specialize in sales, in operations, but we need to master all areas, including budgets, including financials. So um, today, uh, I want to share, end with sharing a quote from Warren Buffett. Uh, accounting is the language of business. If you can't speak the language, it's difficult to win the game. 
So therefore, uh, I'd like to end with this. If you need um, help from YYC to do any of your services, uh, please let me know because uh, our brand promise is empowering entrepreneurial success. And from MCO until now, every week we've been doing webinars. I tell my team, you know, outside there, um, you know, really battling the COVID crisis is doctors, nurses, they are working so hard in hospitals. And for us as accountants, now is the time to step up. Now is the time to really help uh, business owners who, uh, who a lot of times may be suffering because of their financials. Okay, so I have questioned what is the charges, okay? Um, bear with me that we are a firm from 1974 and we are in two countries, Malaysia and Singapore. We have 20,000 clients and 800 staff. Okay, the charges, let me quickly just share, is for this, it's a one year subscription. It's 19,888 for one year. Every quarter will go into your business and this is what we have. We will go in, diagnose the business and also give you solutions. So every quarter is actually 5,000, all right? And with that, I want to end uh, my uh, presentation. If you want more information, please scan here for more information. Okay, back to you, host. Sorry, I think I ran a little bit over time. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. Thank you so much, Tatishi. It's a very, very great sure. sharing. So, uh, Deb, so far, there's not any questions in yet. So maybe they are typing. So everyone, if you have any questions, so please type your question in because here is the, how to say, the right time to actually ask the speakers, know the expert is here. So if you have any question or any help do you need, just feel free to share here and let us know. So just want to ask a little bit, yeah. So it's like, um, because you, you mentioned about uh, how is the power cash flow and etc. So I want to ask, right, if, what if the company is only like one solo man? The solo man it has to be like CEO, has to be the salesperson, has to be the accountant. So does this kind of company uh, needs to start the accounting uh, planning earlier? Yeah, or... thank you. Very good question. Yeah. yeah. So the first step is uh, for every business owner, whether we are one person, 10 person or 100 person, we need to at least every month look at our profit and loss and our balance sheet this is the basic because how well we are doing as a business owner we we need to have our report card and our report card is our monthly profit and loss and balance sheet if you say you think you're doing well then you have to look oh this year this month how much is my sales did it improve how much is my profit how much is my is in my bank so if you just starting to do business or even your one person business, this discipline you must have from, uh, from the start. And then uh, as you grow bigger, uh, you can hire people to do that for you. Uh, even as a one person business, you can outsource your bookkeeping services to companies. But as a business owner, you need to learn how to read the financials mm -hmm. because it's your report card. <laughs> so right, therefore, right. yeah, <laughs> I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So uh, we have uh, two questions coming in. Uh, first question, what is your advice for new companies? So mm. I guess uh, just now you mentioned about that you know for new companies that uh, they, they need to learn uh, the budgeting and etc. Right? Mm. So uh, any any more else advice uh, for new companies like really just start up and etc. Yeah, I think uh, these are all parts of building habits. I, uh, as a new company, I'm sure a uh, new company is always thinking about sales, uh, how to make profit. That's, that's exactly right. Now you need to work on that. But while you are doing that on the back end, you can still uh, hire someone, like I said, uh, to get your accounts in order to have this good habit. Because even as a new company, you still need to, uh, as a business owner, you need to fulfill your compliance obligation. Like you need to get your accounts filed, done taxes. I, I've seen so many companies because at the start, they didn't know this, right? Because nobody teach them. So at the start, they, they, they neglected this and end up by the time they want to get their books in order. Uh, why do they want to get their books in order? Because sometimes you want to get a bank loan and they can't <laughs> because their accounts are up to date. <laughs> so mm. by the time they want to get things in order, it's piled up to so long that it's very expensive to do so. There's many years of backlog you have to catch up with. And at the same time, when you want to get the, uh, the, the, the accounts done up for bank loan, you can't because it, it's too long. It's, it's neglected for too long. 
Okay, that's one. And then second is nowadays, uh, Texas is also very strict. So if you want to, uh, so therefore the first thing I want to recommend for new business owners is build up this good habit. And you can also try to do a budget for next year. A budget mm -hmm. is actually a plan, but translated to numbers. If you have this, at least you, you start your, you, even if let's say halfway through the year, your budget falls through, then you can look back and see, hey, how come uh, was my assumption so wrong? Uh, I needed to pivot, which is nothing wrong. You can do that. But, you know, I think that definitely needs to be done so that you can uh, start to have the habit of planning ahead. And we're not looking at five, ten years plan. We're looking at at least one year plan. Okay. All right. We have second question from Stephen. So uh, he's asking that we are an NGO. Do you offer cheaper rate for NGOs? Yes, we can discuss. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. We can scan here, we can discuss. Yeah. All right. So I guess uh, there's no more questions. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your sharing, Tatishin. Okay. So it's a very, very useful sharing. I, yeah. Oh, sorry. Just hold you another minute. Okay. Uh, we have another question coming in. So this is from Alvin. So any software for bookkeeping for new companies to be used to prevent the long neglected works? Yeah, I think the next, uh, our Serene, our next speaker, she will be sharing mm -hmm. on that. So please stay tuned. I don't answer first. There is <laughs> software for doing that. So i uh, let Serene answer. And uh, definitely there are many, many softwares out there. Some are cloud-based. And so it's very, very convenient nowadays. And for business owners, uh, especially for startups, I suggest um, cloud software because you can just use your phone. You know, you can just use your phone to view your accounts, to know who owes you money, know how much bank account you have. But I will leave that for Serene to answer, okay? All right. All right, All right thank that, you. Yeah, Bye, thank everyone. you so much, Dr. Shin. Bye-bye. All right, let us, without further ado, let us, uh, let us to invite uh, Serene, the CEO of Ibis Cloud Syndrome Perhat. Hi. Hi, Serene. Hi, uh, uh, yes. Can you, can you start your video? Yes, just a sec. Uh. Yep. Okay. Hi, sorry. Sorry for, sorry for a bit delayed for just now. Previous no, session. no problem. No problem. Yeah. All I'm right. so, so enjoy listening to that thing she's sharing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let us uh, set up your screen now. All right. So maybe you can start share your slides first. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Firstly, just would like to... Uh, Thanks, uh, this uh, is Abai for inviting me to do the sharing today. So before I get myself started, uh, I also followed the entire sessions uh, with Dating Shin just now. Isn't uh, she is uh, the powerful speaker? Okay, I believe uh, at present uh, the audience here has uh, um, should actually get uh, benefited from what Dating Shin has shared in terms of the budgeting, in terms of the uh, overall uh, uh, upcoming uh, budgeting set uh, for SME. So uh, from what I think she just shared, uh, the one thing that I see is that there are a lot of messy data as a professional. They will have to use up uh, uh, in order to get uh, the messy data to be produced and in order to get the, the accurate data or the accurate information in order to uh, have a better advisory to the uh, SME or to their clients. That is why she also emphasized a lot as what she just said, uh, the system or so-called the solutions that is uh, one thing is play a very important role in uh, in, in, in between here. So as far as we are from Ibis, uh, Ibis Cloud, uh, we are the tech software provider and our role here is to serve the tax uh, industry, uh, this is a tax professional industry, namely the tax agents. Okay, before I get started, uh, I will just share uh, some brief introduction of who we are. Okay. Uh, so Ibis Tax, Sanjambo, Ibis Tax, uh, Ibis Club, sorry, Ibis Club, Sanjambo had uh, our branding is uh, Ibis Tax. We have been in this uh, tech software uh, uh, market uh, for over 12 years. And we started from an offline solution. And last year, we introduced uh, this uh, cloud tech solutions in order to serve the uh, tax agents in a better way. All right. So at present, we have more than uh, approximately about 500 tax agents, tax professional nationwide who are at present using the software and indirectly we service um, approximately about 200,000 SME and personal tax uh, payer. And all this while uh, we specialize in tax computing software development. 
Um, besides the four founders from the company, at present we have 35 professionals uh, uh, who are also our user uh, joining the company as our core founder. So these core founder, they were also at the same time from time, from time to time, they're giving us the comments and giving us the, uh, um, uh, the advice as to how to improve our system. And being a tech software provider in this market uh, for over 10 years, uh, we, our effort actually has attracted uh, attention from, um, uh, from, from many sectors. And one of those is the Lebaga Hasil Dalam Degree. I still remember that uh, when this uh, LHDN, they first introduced the uh, uh, cloud computing that was in year 2010. Okay, that was the time all the tax agents uh, was uh, uh, being uh, told to use up the e-filing sections, okay? No more PDF format, okay? So ever since the year 2010, from then onwards, we working closely with LHDNN uh, each time when we were invited for the discussion in terms of the e-filing development. And for all this year, we always update the software with uh, all the compliance that uh, mixed by the LHDNN. Uh, this is as, as uh, by end of the day, all this is uh, for the uh, benefit of the tax agents. Okay, as all the things that we build onto the system uh, is actually supporting the tax agent to have a better way to perform the e-filing and uh, to follow the uh, compliance date made by LGDN when it comes to the e-filing section or the tax compliance sections. Okay, so we are glad to share that with the effort that we have been putting in this industry. Last year, uh, we have endorsed, we have another endorsement. Why I mentioned another endorsement? Because the first endorsement uh, that we endorsed by LHDN, that was year in 2013, okay? Uh, if let's say the tax agent, I believe they are uh, many professional uh, today as well, following what uh, the sharing today by Shin and also try to understand what how cloud can uh, benefit uh, your operation. So that was the year 2013 uh, uh, that are, they are talking about the e-bus submission, in badger submission, okay? Uh, the software, then uh, the offline version itself has the capability of doing the performing the back submission. And then when it comes to 2019, LHDN last year introduced another new format where we call EDTSC. All right. So uh, as we catch the attentions as well from the market, since last year we launched our cloud software, we invited by LHDN again to develop uh, to directly integrate our solutions to the e-filing portal under this uh, EDTS. And in November we have the uh, endorsement uh, on our this uh, functions by performing the e-filing uh, integrations uh, through the web API. And also uh, by contributing all the uh, 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 and advising uh, the uh, so-called the SME, the tax agent to digitalize uh, the other uh, operations from the offline to, uh, to the cloud. Uh, we're also receiving uh, the status as the uh, TSV by this uh, MDEP in uh, this uh, February. So uh, today when you're subscribing our this uh, IB stacks, the cloud software, you will be able to enjoy this benefit, okay? The matching grant. So during this difficult time, everyone uh, actually, um, uh, by maintaining the operation itself, we still always try to see, to get the opportunity to expand the business. And so happened for us, Ibis Cloud, we also have this opportunity uh, that we venture into this uh, Indonesia uh, uh, by, uh, how to say, uh, have the collaboration, collaboration with the Indonesia's, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, established firms, uh, tax agents from, from this Indonesia to have our very uh, first overseas market in Indonesia. And the reason uh, of these collaborations is mainly the partnership, our view that cloud computing now has been uh, uh, shifted from a train to an uh, inevitable, inevitable uh, tools for every organization, especially when it comes to uh, the, the tax, okay? So for all the sharing I just uh, shared with everyone, uh, now I would like to share is the, uh, what is the product that I carry and how does it benefit the uh, tax agents, all right? So I have been in this market uh, for the past 10 years, as I mentioned earlier. And one, uh, as I, I, okay, as not, I'm not a profession, but uh, I, I'm not a profession, but I learned a lot of this uh, knowledge, uh, tax knowledge, tax compliance uh, through the process of supporting uh, the tax agent. And also I have my in-house tax agents. And many times I see uh, one of the biggest challenge for a tax agent or the tax companies uh, uh, is the uh, compliance changes, regulations mixed by LHDN. And 
Every year, the changes rate, each time the budget announced, uh, uh, that will be the time the tax agent have to share their thought, have to share their, uh, the sharing, the data over uh, in many platforms as to make uh, the, uh, the, uh, the SME as well as the taxpayer to understand what is the uh, changes like. For me, I myself as the taxpayer and my company is the SME ourselves, I think everyone probably agree to me how much we know about the budget every year that impact us. Okay, no doubt taxes impact the SME and the uh, tax uh, uh, taxpayer. All right, so, and how do we know uh, what kind of incentive or what kind of relief and rebate, especially during uh, this uh, period of time? Our this uh, uh, government also has been uh, uh, has come up with a lot of this in, uh, initiative or in, in, sorry incentive uh, to to full, uh, to help up the SME as a taxpayer. So uh, I would say, as a layman, I would say, um, very many many of the time we are not really aware how to make use of that or not even really, really understand how do we apply it to our business. So that is why it's very crucial. Uh, uh, the tax agent play a very crucial role. Okay, because we will be able to get all this information from them through them. But that is why I see the bigger challenge for a tax agent will be these regulation changes. Okay, uh, many times the tax agents, they will be able to uh, understand and then they will always update themselves with the compliance through the budget seminar or to all the this uh, book of Panduan. But how well, or how, how well they can uh, memorize in that Okay, not to mention is sometimes uh, due to the business. So some of the senior or the this uh, tax agent themselves not able to pass on the regulation changes to the uh, staff level. So many times this will cause uh, uh, the inaccurate tax computations uh, uh, by end of the days. All right, and also from our studies, they are still around forty percent to fifty percent of the tax agents still maintaining manual system. As we know, manual system is meant to change, all right? By mistake, whenever the formula that you already have set up in the system, it could be easily or unintentionally changed by the user. And in, again, in, by end of the day, it will cause uh, the inaccuracy of the tax computations, all right? And then uh, talking about the data, as a tax agent, it's not easy. I, I understand that because they have deadline to meet. And then uh, for each time, the clients could become in a very last minute, in order for them to produce all this uh, information, they will have to get the uh, uh, data entry, la, the preparation, and all this massive data, again and again, they have to follow up or have to do repeat the same thing from year to year when they are still maintaining a manual system. All right. And uh, another uh, big challenge is that the shortage and the staff and uh, shift turnover, especially due to the COVID-19, many staff um, uh, higher higher rate actually seems like it's also a challenge uh, for all the industry. I would rather say that. Okay, so as a offline pro provider previously, uh, we do see when you maintain the offline or the premises installed software, uh, the cost is there. Okay, the cost of maintaining your upgrade, the upgrade, uh, the issue always resulting in the increase of your this uh, capex. All right, so the cost. The cloud computing software is an answer and is a tool to the above I just shared with everyone because the cloud solution is always uh, being kept up to date version. Every time the LHDN have the change, then we will update accordingly. That is to always making sure, even probably along the way, because due to the uh, overload of the uh, uh, the workload, in many times when the staff itself, themselves they work out with the system, we were making sure the compliance is complied. So I always encountered uh, some query from the uh, staff uh, when they comes to the uh, computation, they will always ask me, why oh, Serene, why this uh, calculation is different from mine? So when they try to understand the issue, we, we actually address the issue. Oh, this is because this year there is a changes related to this field. So that is why from the point of the uh, this uh, uh, reviewer, it's actually we save the time for them. Okay, we have already pre uh, dis dis described all the compliance in making sure the compliance is up to date and is according to the uh, changes by the LHD and N. All right, and then now we're talking about cloud uh, computing. This is actually a beauty of cloud computing. As now you are not only limitations uh, the working flow. We are not able to go back to the office from the lockdown time. Even now there are different states starting from tomorrow. There again, uh, this is a CMCO. So 
definitely cloud computing uh, is the uh, answer or is the perfect tools during this time. Not for now. In fact, it should be, it's, it's a long way. Okay, it's a long way to adopt this system. And then for the uh, cloud solution, because now we, uh, the ability, one of the benefit of the cloud is actually, um, it can actually drive cost saving. All right, because now we have transformed those uh, capex into this operating cost, and this operating cost is many times is ties up to the usage. Okay, because it is now based on the subscription basis. All right, so in short, uh, by computing or so called automated uh, your this uh, system uh, to the cloud is definitely help you to save a lot of time. And we're talking about is the efficiency and uh, uh, the efficiency and the effectiveness is always been there. All right. So uh, uh, linked to what I say, the benefit of cloud, the, the colors of uh, the, there are colors of benefits when you uh, of cloud when you uh, when you came across and I have summarized some of uh, here to share with everyone. Again, I always emphasize to my user, you can access anywhere, anytime from any devices. All right. So as uh, uh, not, uh, as I just shared earlier, uh, e-filing is a typical cloud computing uh, 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 product. So all the tax agent has been in cloud computing environment since year 2010, okay? So now you, it is time for you to really move, to move your operation, entire operation from the offline or from the manual to the cloud because they will enjoy the benefit uh, that you'll be still able to access the data uh, from, from home. Now, actually, uh, due to the changes, uh, many of the uh, this organizations, a lot of the stuff has to be worked from home. So for my user that they have uh, deploying or so-called adopting this uh, cloud uh, since uh, uh, early of this year before the NCO, in fact, they actually really appreciate uh, the change that take place beforehand, okay, before the NCO. They get everything ready over 70, uh, uh, about 70% of our offline clients has actually shifted to cloud. So from during that time, the staff uh, still be able to work from home and then whatever information they kept, uh, they've been entered to the cloud versions uh, for the review and the cell, they easily to retrieve or over in cloud, okay? So uh, that is why, uh, as also another uh, example is that uh, one of the uh, uh, my Langkawi uh, clients. So it's also one of the reason I say that the staff, uh, the, the maintain of the staff is also one of the challenge that uh, by the tax agent. Uh, Sometimes when this is a very, uh, how to say, experienced staff, by any circumstances, uh, she want to leave your company, uh, actually you need to retrain another staff. And I have this scenario uh, where this uh, Langkawi is a uh, user. One of the staff, uh, the I think uh, senior staff, uh, for some personal reason, she have to shift to this uh, EPO. So by the time they actually adopting this uh, cloud uh, system, and then the, that is why the senior that uh, shifted to this uh, EPO still be able to contribute. Okay, still be able to contribute uh, by uh, in, in the tax operation side. So this is one thing, uh, how to say, the cloud system uh, has no limit and is scalability. Okay, so even now the scalability is the staff themselves has actually set up uh, a company uh, in the EPO itself and can actually get the business expense in EPO as well. Okay, so as for the uh, this uh, capital expenditure, as what I mentioned earlier, now you can shift this cost from the capex to the uh, operating expenses because this uh, is is uh, pay per use basis is a subscription basis, and many times from. I speak from this uh, user experience from my offline and, and the cloud because from last time I, as an offline software provider, many times we've been giving a lot of support when it comes to the offline maintenance, okay? Like they, a lot of time they will have to maintain their server, they will have to, uh, uh, how to say, subscribe or pay their this, uh, uh, licensing. And many times I would say, let's say they are not tech savvy and they have to engage the outside vendor to take care of the system. even. A simple word like installations of the software. Most of the time, the staff uh, uh, they hesitate to do because they afraid they, they might do it wrongly, and then uh, they will they will have to answer for that. So many times they will just get the boss to engage the outsider, the vendor, as to help them just coming, calling us to set up or to install the system. Okay, so that is the expenditure along the way that that, that is going to be incurred. But when the call is that. Uh, there are all the costs about uh, for us for for us as a provider. We will provide all the solutions over in cloud. Okay, that to save your time to do the installations. So that is why it's very cost effective and is this uh, scalability. Um, 
even either you are this, uh, your size of the company, you are and may, what what kind of size like you are small, medium, or this uh, large or uh, uh, expanding company, you can actually adopt the system that as and when you expand, uh, instead of you buying another license to start up your deal branches, your business, you pay no cost at all. You only pay the subscription. You add, you only add the user in order to start up with the operation for uh, from any state or uh, from any state. All right, that is why the comp uh, the competitiveness is also uh, arise in such a way. I have a user just shared with me. I think last week. So she said, uh, last time when she used out the uh, offline version, she's not able to answer to the question uh, to the taxpayer each time when she, uh, the taxpayer has to uh, have to find out what is their uh, tax comply uh, the tax returns and what is the tax call how much being charged uh, for that particular year. So when she converted to cloud, when they adopting this cloud easily with a handful, as just that thing she has shared just now with a handful itself. Uh, this uh, uh, tax agent will be able to consult uh, the taxpayer on time. So this is something the extra value or extra benefit that you can also bring up to the SME. Uh, also, one part I would like to say during the MCO, in fact, uh, for those uh, users that they're using the uh, the cloud things, uh, they still made in because they still manage to produce the tax computation and to the e-filing submission. Actually, it helped a lot in the SME and the taxpayer. Uh, during this time, there are a lot of uh, application probably the SME is going for like the loan application or any uh, uh, expansion plan that they need to uh, to have the documents uh, as a proven document. So during that time, uh, uh, they helps they helps a lot because uh, they produce on time and they actually can uh, even uh, uh, the benefit lah, the benefit is that they helps a lot in the SME and the taxpayer uh, for any application that you will, they would like to proceed. All right. So when it comes to the automated backup and disaster recovery, this is also one part I see from the offline um, is, is uh, one of the uh, 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 critical problem, okay? Uh, because along the way, uh, tax agents are very busy. They are taking care of the entire process uh, of the taxpayer. And many times they overlook in doing the backup for their data. And so far, uh, there are a lot of cases that the backup is not being done. And so happen the server is down, all right? So as a software provider, I provide you the software you install in your own uh, premises. I, I can't do anything to help you without a backup. So that is why uh, by moving to cloud, we the cloud system itself, we will do all the backup for all of you. You can access anywhere, anytime, and the uh, data is always there. Okay, and another part will be the disaster recovery of the data. This is comes to like the uh, local network, the uh, internet, uh, the sorry, the local network, the connections, uh, those uh, connection uh, network environment, the infrastructure, when it is not properly done, there is a high uh, changes that it will affect the uh, performance of the uh, solutions. Uh, by end of the day, could be data corruptions. Okay, and then VPN is also one of the way during some of my offline users, they use uh, the VPN to link up to the company server, but somehow this way of doing is very vulnerable in such a way that uh, easily being um, data corrupted. And then secondly is that uh, it actually easily being hacked by those uh, ransomware or those uh, cyber criminal. Uh, I have two, uh, in fact, actually being in this line, uh, I would say very frequent that we ask We've been asked by the uh, tax agents uh, user to get help uh, when they get caught on this uh, ransomware. Okay, and then from uh, I remember uh, two typical ones is that one uh, uh, one of the users that get the ransomware when they have the this uh, data recovery, they ask us to help to do the recovery of the data. Uh, the backup that they actually uh, get from the uh, the the hacker is left about sixty percent, so it's not in full. Okay, and the other uh, scenario, the other cases is that uh, even the uh, user themselves, they formatted the hardware. Somehow when they try to install back the software, it doesn't work well. Something is missing. Okay, so this is why uh, moving to cloud, let the, uh, this, uh, our cloud server, uh, now we actually have a high level security data protected by this uh, Microsoft Alpha. Let's just do all this uh, uh, guide and this protection for all your this, uh, uh, crucial and confidential data. All right. So this is uh, some of the data that I think is the of interest of the uh, tax agents. Okay. So talking about this uh, software itself, uh, of course, do uh, I just would like to highlight again, uh, this software, in fact, is not for SME. All right. This is not for the uh, uh, SME, but uh, the uh, is actually uh, specific, uh, specially designed and developed for tax agent. All right. So the functions of the software uh, that the tax agent can use uh, can use out is to prepare from the corporate tax law. Okay, uh, to the uh, personal tax, 
uh, the partnership tax, the LLP, the form E and EA. And besides the tax return itself, the system also produced all those relevant um, HKLA, Lampirana, all those uh, uh, prescribed form that uh, uh, are produced by our LHDNN. Okay. So along the way, some schedules uh, uh, is also will be generated at the same time. And as you can see from that, uh, the EGTS through the web API, this is one of the uh, features that we have in the system where it can, it helps you to perform the, uh, this uh, e-filing uh, within three seconds. Okay, we have integrated this, uh, so this, uh, our, this uh, solutions to the LHDNM through web API and it makes the easy, uh, it makes the submission in, 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 in three seconds, okay, in three seconds. By a single button click onto our, in our software, all the information will be uploaded. And for us to support this, uh, we always lie with LHDNM because this LHDNM, they also very much depending on us to upgrade them, so to update and uh, to update them uh, uh, when it comes to the stability of the uh, server itself, all right? So we play the part in between the tax agent as well as the uh, LHDNN, okay? So uh, the e-tax filing is also another form of the uh, submissions where uh, EDTS is meant to be used by tax agent. At present, the LHDNN, this uh, EDTS server is meant to be used by tax agent, whereby the e-tax filing is meant to be used, if let's say you are submitting this tax uh, by using your client's uh, ID and password, which means the e uh portal, all right? So as a software provider in this market, as one of the leading brands, we also have get ourselves uh, ready to develop the MITRS. I, I believe maybe these terms is news to the, uh, uh, what is so-called the S SMB, but for tax agents, they're very well aware of the uh, arrival, okay, uh, of the MITRS, Malaysia Income Tax Reporting System, okay. So the system sooner or later, we are already in, in, uh, in the midst of developing these tools in order to help all the tax agents by end of the days for those Lampera HK, the information that required by LHDN will be transformed into the data form and to be uploaded to the LHDN portal. All right. So for all the uh, system, uh, for this system, we design and we try to help all the tax agent in, in a better way, efficient and uh, e e efficiency, increase the efficiency. All right. Some of the features that I can share today is uh, pretty much you are not buying the software from us. Okay. You don't, it doesn't, uh, you don't own the software. The software is belong to us, but the usage of the software is you can use up the software at any time. All right. This is why as a cloud, you, there's no requirement on the installation. It saves your time and there's no updating and you don't pay us any maintenance cost. It's pretty much pay per use, all right? How many uh, uh, tax uh, submission that you need to perform for that month? You just subscribe the number of credits will do, all right? And then of course, this is the unlimited user uh, solution as well as unlimited uh, client's record solution. And furthermore, for those credit that you subscribe with us, it's timeless, all right? Uh, any unutilized uh, this credit, you can always roll over to next year, all right? And then we have a very strict control, user control as over in cloud, we have to help the uh, user to uh, restrict the control over their sensitive data, okay? So we have the uh, user level setting as well as down the road, uh, down the road, we actually have the setting for the uh, uh, user to control over, to review the data on, the, uh, uh, on those uh, confidential uh, clients information, all right? As again, uh, linked to what I said earlier, this software always updated with the compliant changes by our this uh, uh, inland revenue board, all right? So it is a central update to benefit all the tax agents or uh, the staff to keep uh, upgrading the, uh, the software. And then uh, as for our organization, we digitalized the uh, entire, uh, uh, how do you call our operation since the uh, MCO lockdown, okay? So we work from home during that time, but at the same time, we produce uh, the uh, online, we provide the online uh, e-tutorial as well as the e-training. Uh, we have been conducting, I think, uh, more than uh, 30, 30, I think 30 sessions, okay, uh, since uh, March. So the user, they can uh, anytime register with us to have an overview on our this uh, software. And now we set uh, every Thursday from 10.30 uh, to 11.30, there will be an overview. So uh, every tax agent would like to find out more about the software, you can register with us. And then uh, along the way, we do understand each time, last time we used to conduct a, a premises training to all the user, but now everything's talking about new normal. That is why we do everything on cloud by providing the e-tutorial and e-training. What you need to do is that just to register 
uh, with us. Okay. As for the e-tutorial, we also produce a series of these um, videos over in YouTube uh, and then make it available also in our website for the user uh, to guide the user. All right. Okay, so for what uh, the benefits that I have shared uh, earlier, for our charges is as low as 12 ringgit. Okay, so as long as 12 ringgit uh, when you perform the e data transferring from our system to the e filing portal. Okay, and then for now, uh, for you to uh, adopt this, uh, uh, to digitalize your this tax operation, you can enjoy up to 5,000 of the matching grant when you subscribe our software. All right. So I will just uh, share the uh, uh, information on the uh, matching grant, okay? So uh, this matching grant, it was uh, introduced, uh, it was actually initiated uh, by this, uh, uh, our MOF from the budget 2020 last year. And it's been uh, uh, full swing uh, early this uh, February, okay? So this is Ministry of Finance has announced a new matching ground for the SMB during 2020. And there is uh, up to 500 million over five years for this matching grant for the SMB to transform or to digitalize their, this uh, operation, okay? Uh, uh, to, uh, over, uh, to digitalize, to adopt the digitalization measure for their business, all right? And then uh, the benefit from uh, what the uh, uh, initiated is that uh, the SME will be able to optimize process and increase the efficiency of their business operation, managing workflow and easily access data via uh, cloud storage services. Okay. And previously in February, they, they were only five digitalization area being uh, uh, giving the uh, matching grant adoption. And now they have increased to seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So uh, from all the, this, uh, the, the, this uh, SME, uh, you can actually, uh, like this uh, data sheet has shared earlier, let's say you're looking for accounting software, uh, you can actually find the accounting a vendor list uh, from this uh, respective um, uh, website in order to get those uh, vendor that would be, uh, that is selected as a TSP, okay, in order for you to enjoy the matching grant, okay. So these are the seven uh, main category for the digitalization area, all right. And then as a role and responsibility here, uh, this is a BSN is a channel for the grant applications, okay, as well as the SME another channel for the grant application. And at that, MDEC play an important role uh, for the selection of the TSP. Okay, so the TSP, in order to fulfill, we also have uh, the role to play, okay, in order to, uh, to, to conduct, okay, to share on this information, to encourage the SMB to get this uh, matching grant. So as an SMB, when you would like to apply for this uh, matching grant, there is the eligibility, okay? So the company is at least 60% owned by Malaysian and the company registered under the relevant laws of Malaysia. The SME has been in operation for at least one year, okay? And the operations uh, in one year, the company required to have a minimum annual sales turnover of 100,000, or the company operation less than two years, or more than two years, company required to have a minimum annual sales turnover of 50,000 and preceding two consecutive years, okay? And these are the required document. And this is uh, a new SOP, okay? If let's say for those uh, 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 that have been following uh, some of the uh, sharing on this uh, process of the matching grant, this is a new SOP that we get from BSN uh, yesterday, from MDEP, sorry, yesterday, okay? So the required document, they simplified the required documents now, all right? So firstly, you have to complete the applications form and declaration form. All right, and then of course the relevance uh, by uh, the business license registration and the, uh, the statutory form that you have to compile everything. Okay, and you require the copy of the uh, director's IC, okay, or the partner's IC, also prop, okay, which level is applicable. Okay, and the uh, company bank statement for the last two months, uh, this is the latest uh, SOP. Previously, you were required to submit a year, uh, the audited report for the past one year, or your, the latest management account. And for now, the new SOP is only required the bank statement for the last two months, all right? And finally, you will have to obtain an, an quotation or an invoice from your service uh, and the service agreement from this uh, TSP, uh, from this TSP, like for instance, let's say for the tax agent, you wish to apply for this matching grant, you just have to obtain these three, uh, these uh, this documents from us, 
Okay. And talking about the application of workflow, this is also a new SOP. Okay. So uh, previously, the application, it has to be done by the applicant themselves. They will have to compile everything. They will have to submit to the respective bank uh, for the uh, uh, application purpose. But now, uh, due to the, uh, uh, the COVID-19 and then uh, this uh, MDEC actually now they also, uh, how to say, uh, they allow the TSB to keep, to keep track, uh, how to say, to monitor all the documents being submitted to the TSB and then together compile the application and submit to the respective on behalf of the applicants. Okay, but somehow, if, let's say, uh, the uh, applicants still prefer to sub, uh, to uh, how to say to submit on their own, that is not a problem. Okay, so the process flow is that the SME uh, to contact and approve appoint the TSP for digital digitalization service, and then the SME is to complete and submit the application form along with required document to TSP. All right. So as a TSP, we will go through and compile your SMB application. This is what we have already been doing because uh, we, uh, from our experience, uh, from my team sharing, previously because uh, there is uh, there is some uh, application being rejected, and most of the time is the incompletion of the uh, forms or the uh, documents submitted. So that is why uh, since July, we, we also at the same time restructure our working flow. We get our user to submit to us all the relevant documents and my team, they will conduct all the uh, check in by making sure all the required documents are in order. So by end of the day, we will uh, inform the user everything is good order, then they will compile everything and submit to the, to the respective bank. So this has really helped them, okay, they save their times to, uh, how to say, to make a number of trips to the uh, LAC, uh, sorry, <laughs> to the bank, or sometimes they will have to produce more and more documents when it uh, actually comes to the rejection and the incomplete of the this uh, documentation, all right? So we have been playing the role by, um, uh, by actually monitor and by going through the uh, form that submitted by our this uh, user. So after everything is in good order, now you can submit to the banks your own or now with the new SOP, you can let us to submit on on behalf of your company. Okay, so for us, we will actually uh, send the list to the bank for the badges that we submit to them. All right, after the, the step to the number three, the bank will process the application 40 days and will notify the TSP on the application status, okay? So uh, upon the approval of the loan uh, on the matching grant, the letter of offer will be issued and have to be signed by the SME, okay? And then on this letter of offer, it must be signed by the director of the company, all right? So uh, do bear in mind, uh, upon the calling on the uh, signing of the LO, uh, director must uh, go, okay? And for the SME, uh, you will have to also at the same time after signing the, this letter of offer to notify the TSP, okay? And by end of the day, the TSP submit claim to the, uh, the claim to the bank with the proof of payment, which is the OR, okay, official receipt, together with the signed offer letter uh, by the SME. And by end of the day, as TSP, we will be uh, receiving the balance of the uh, 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 payment from the bank. Okay, so this is the entire new uh, SOP that I wish to share with everyone today. Hope it will uh, ease your, uh, for a better understanding when you would like to apply for that. Okay, so this part is actually for TSP application. So I will skip. Okay, so for TSP, uh, so for matching grant information, you can actually obtain from these uh, relevant parties. All right, but let's say for anything relates to our software, and uh, to relate to how to apply the matching grant when you subscribe our software, you can actually uh, scan the QR code and then write down the uh, 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 contact number here to reach out to us. We will be uh, more than happy to assist uh, you. All right. Okay. So, thank yeah, you, Nicole. Sorry. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, thank mm. you so much for your sharing. So, mm. uh, yeah, now let's go. We have one question, which is uh, just now uh, 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 Ask uh, during the session, session. but hopefully uh, you can provide the suggestion of, of this. So his question is, any software for bookkeeping for new companies to be used to prevent the not long neglected works? Uh, okay, uh, in fact, as what uh, Daphne has shared earlier, uh, she also encouraged 
uh, the uh, SME to go with the cloud-based solution. So uh, as for us, we are the uh, cloud tech software solution, but from my understanding from the market, there are numbers of brands you, you can go with. So I would suggest you go with some brand. Uh, I, I mean, it's not my position to recommend that, but you easily can find the cloud accounting or any accounting solution over in uh, the website, or you can actually visit uh, the... TSP list, as I mentioned earlier, the TSP list provided uh, in this uh, MDEX uh, website, you can obtain uh, the vendor from there. And then, uh, yeah, at the same time, by uh, adopting the digitalization, you can at the same time enjoying the matching grant benefit. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is no more any questions. So before that, I would like to ask if you have any um, advice for those new company when it come to texting? Uh, yeah. I think whatever on the tax planning yeah. part, Datin shared, mm -hmm. uh, already shared uh, the perfect note. So for us, I would just uh, hope everyone uh, stay safe, okay, and have a and good luck. And then uh, for the last quarter of this uh, 2020, that is what yeah. uh, I hope everyone. Thank yeah. You. Mm. yeah, thank you so much, Sherry, for sharing. And thank you so much for joining us today. Your sharing is so awesome. I believe everyone is uh, gain some benefits and learn something new today. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. I will see you Thanks. next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Exobytes. Grow your business online.